So welcome to the North Grove Farm. Today we're going to be uh, looking at growing in colder weather because as you can see, the weather is getting a little colder. Uh, and we're also gonna be looking at how we're gonna put uh, our beds to bed for the winter. So these are our drying beans. So these grew till the plant died back and then we pulled out the plants and we just shelled these just five minutes ago. So what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna take them into the kitchen. Uh, we have some nice racks where we'll lay them out and um, dry them out a little further. And then these are basically like beans you would buy at the grocery store. So they'll be completely dry and um, you'll soak them and boil them and then be able to cook them. So this is, um, this is what it looks like. This is where the beans come from. <laughs> uh, maybe I can just show you in the in our tomato jungle. This is a sign made by our lovely Amanda. It's probably looking a little bit different in here than what you saw last time. You can see that some of the, the leaves are starting to die back as it gets colder. But we still got quite a few tomatoes in here, so we're going to leave these in here for probably another two weeks. Um, and then we're actually gonna cut down all the tomatoes and use the same soil, because it's still really good soil, to grow some uh, kale. Hopefully because they're in separate pots and containers, uh, we won't end up with the same uh, disease that we had earlier in the year. And then you can also see we've got some hot peppers in here, and these are actually starting to turn red. So these will be, um, they're still good to eat when they're green, um, but they'll be um, reaching their maximum ripeness. Um, Hopefully soon, hopefully before it gets too cold. So um, if anybody likes spice, you know where to find us. It really uh, feels like fall today. Okay, so just because it's the end of the season, I think a lot of people think of um, growing season as you know, ending August 31st, but that's not true at all. There's some great stuff that you can grow in the shoulder season. So a lot of greens are really good to grow at this time. They actually prefer it than the hot weather when they're all getting wilted. So we've got some spinach in here that's looking really good. So this will be ready to harvest any day now. And then we've got some lettuce over here. It's a couple types of lettuce. You can see some of the lettuce that have bolted over there from the heat. So this is all going to be going out in our grocery bags in the next few weeks. And there's, there's quite a lot of it. And the nice thing with both the lettuce and the spinach is that it's what you call a cut and come again plant. So as we harvest, um, these smaller ones will, will grow bigger. So it's actually gonna keep going for quite a while and uh, that'll give us lots, to, lots of tasty salads to have in this time. Down here we have our sun chokes, our Jerusalem artichokes. They do have an edible root at the bottom. It's not super common for people to eat it. You can eat it. But what's really nice about them is that they're one of the last things to bloom. So this is all, you can see it's just kind of starting to bloom and we're at the end of September, early October, and these will be blooming through October. So it's kind of nice. It's a last bit of color in the garden before the winter. The other crop that is quite happy at this time of year, some root vegetables. So we have some radishes and these are starting to get nice and big. So we'll leave them in the ground a little bit longer till they're, uh, so you can see some of, some of them are still pretty small, so we're gonna let them get a little bit bigger because um, they can get probably, you know, that size. Um, but they're, they're very happy in the ground. They don't, they don't mind the cold um, so much uh, and we will only have to kind of worry about them when the frosts start. Uh, and I think we've got a few more weeks on that. We have white turnip and these are kind of different than when I think of a turnip, I think of like a rutabaga, like quite a big and kind of tougher vegetable. These are really sweet, actually. You can slice them up and have them raw in a salad and, and use the greens as well. These are pretty tender. But again, these will get a bit bigger. So we went through the other day and thinned them. See these three really close together. So we'll take out this middle one because there's no way these two would grow if they had somebody in the middle. So hopefully these two will get even bigger till they, till they meet. And, um, and these ones are great to eat right now. And then we have more spinach and lettuce here. This lettuce we just planted yesterday and, they, um, and this is Swiss chard. And this also is looking a little sad because we just planted it yesterday, transplanted it from seedling. But these are also really happy in the cold. So um, they should be good uh, all the way down to, to sort of frost temperatures. And we're really lucky to have a greenhouse, even though it's unheated, it'll keep us going into the winter. What else can I show you? 
These are tomatillos. They're actually a relative of the gooseberry. You can see it kind of looks a little similar. And despite the name, they don't really taste a lot like tomatoes, but you can use them to make things like um, salsa verde or shakshuka. So these are starting to look really good. So you can see it's got like a little skin on it and that just comes right off and that's pretty much ready to go. And they're ready to go once the skin has cracked. We actually had one of our volunteers say he just picked all the ones that were on the ground and he made a, a great uh, recipe with them. So I think we're gonna harvest these and also see if anybody is brave enough to, um, to take some of these home. When you're kind of done your, your garden, you're ready to start putting stuff to bed, it's a really good idea to mulch your beds. And the reason for that is you don't want to lose nutrients from, from your beds over the winter with, with the rains and things like that. Things can really get washed out. You want to try and keep things in place and, um, and not lose all the hard work that you've done and all the soil buildup. So one thing that you can do, you can mulch it with straw. You can also mulch with wood chips like we have Put down on the paths here although then you need to be careful about them being treated i keep calling this stuff hay but it's straw the hay has seeds in it and which we would not want in the garden we won't go too thick with it but probably like that thick is is good enough um, and we'll cover this bed um, then this bed with the straw um, and then this one this one Oh, they look so nice when they've got straw on them. Something else that we're doing is we just put down black plastic. The black plastic is especially good at trying to kill weeds, so that's part of um, what we're trying to do is rein in our, I have some weed control. One of the rules of the community garden is nobody's allowed to grow mint because mint stays for eternity. We pulled all the mint out, covered it with black plastic for a year, and look, they're still coming out the sides. This is the, the cautionary tale about don't, mint. don't plant mint. Unless you want it forever. Unless you want it forever. So this is our asparagus patch. You can kind of maybe recognize if this was small and pointy, wouldn't it look like an asparagus? That's how the asparagus gets harvested in spring. Uh, you would just kind of cut off the shoots as they come up. But we really want to encourage that growth. So when this asparagus starts all turning this kind of yellow, we're going to cut down all the stalks to be able to encourage some new growth and, and um, stop them from getting too shaded out. Otherwise, you can really miss them. If you miss them by day, then they end up shooting up. This is all kind of the asparagus that got uh, not harvested. It grows really tall and then you can't really eat it. And you can see asparagus has berries. Who knew, right? In theory, you could use the berries, the seeds from here to start a new asparagus crop, but it does take a number of years. I think probably people who have been here on the farm with us know it, we've been working on this asparagus patch for several years. I think this is our third year because it does take a few years before you actually can harvest anything. So you want to take care of what you got. Thank you everyone for joining us on the farm today. We'll see you in a few weeks where we'll be planting some garlic. So stay tuned for that.